Hey, you, look at me. If you wanna make money this week in stocks, Bitcoin, Ethereum, any cryptocurrency, you need to watch this video. I'm not joking, I've never filmed a video on Saturday night before. I'm doing it for you because this is the difference between Ethereum going to 1250 or 2500. This is the difference between Bitcoin going from $18,000 or $30,000 and the difference between any stock that you own going up or down 20%, I'm not joking. This event, this Wednesday, this week, at 8.30 a.m., okay, it is the CPI data. C-P-I, inflation data, is coming out Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. 8.30. Everyone and their mother is going to be talking about this in the next couple days, but I'm filming this on a Saturday night and getting this out to you first so that you can, tr you can try to predict and try to either buy or sell Bitcoin, Ethereum, stocks. If any of that sounds good to you, if you'd like to make money this week, please, for the love of God, smash the like button. I'm going to stop right now. Please just do it. Smash the like button, please. Okay, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to lay the groundwork for why this is the most important moment of the month. It's an insane, insane moment. This is the biggest moment and why it's going to affect the prices this big. Okay, then real quickly, I'm going to break down this data on Wednesday, the CPI data. I'm going to say it 50,000 times for the algorithm. Okay, this video is about the CPI data on Wednesday, YouTube. Show this to someone who wants to know how to make money this week because it's the only thing that matters. Hey, YouTube. CPI data is the only thing that matters. If you think that your squiggly lines or your favorite trader can predict this this week, you're insane, okay? Moving averages do not matter. The only thing that matters is what the inflation data is going to be this Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. Are we clear? Is everyone clear? Have you smashed the like button yet? Okay, great. We're gonna go through that and I'm gonna break down what I what I think is gonna happen with that data and what we need to, to do going forward and to, to predict this, okay? We're gonna try to predict this. Let's get on with it. I don't wanna waste any more of your time, okay? First and foremost, we need to set the stage. The stage is that we have some nice looking charts. We have a bear market rally coming up here and that's wonderful. But we have even the world's largest asset manager, BlackRock, partnering with Coinbase and buying, they have $10 trillion in assets under management, which is an insane number by the way. And they are going to be buying Ethereum, which is why I changed my name on Twitter to um, Kale Abe buying all the, what is it? Kale Abe, Kale BlackRock buying all the Ethereum Abe. And so when I saw this news, I was like, holy crap, Ethereum could literally hit $2,500 in the next six to eight weeks if, 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 if we get this number to be correct. If this number is not correct, if this number is great on Wednesday, yes, we can go to $2,500 for sure. If it's not though, the problem is, is we're going to go back down to 1250. And the reason for this, the reason the downside is so risky now is because even more stuff has happened since I last talked about this, okay? So since this stuff happens fast, guys, since BlackRock, has said, hey, we're going to buy a bunch of Ethereum. This is amazing, right? I love this. Um, since that happened, we also had this fateful number come out. And you don't probably know what this is, and that's okay because you're a normal person. NFP means payroll, okay? So now we're going to get into the education. Are you guys ready? You're ready for me to educate you on this Saturday night? Here we go. I got this all I got this all done. The Federal Reserve that controls everything, okay? I can, I can explain it all in like five seconds, just with this over here, <laughs> look at this. This horrible drawing is going to explain more to you than you could learn in a college education in about two minutes, three minutes. The, the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, controls every the price of all assets. He makes the money printer go brrrr, right? He prints money. If, if more money is printed, right, assets go up. You guys with me? Money printing equals assets go up. Less money printing, assets go down, okay? But the Federal Reserve that Jerome Powell is in charge of has two mandates. They have two things that they are focused on. And the two things are jobs and inflation, okay? So let's start with inflation because that's the thing that's happening on Wednesday, right? You guys probably know this, but just for those of you who are in the back, what happens to the money printer when this happens? It's very simple. If inflation goes up, the money printer goes down. You guys with me? The more inflation goes up, you can't print as much money because if you print money out of thin air, that tends to cause inflation, which is bad, okay? The Fed does not want high inflation, so they can't print as much money. If inflation comes down, though, the opposite situation, you guys with me? <laughs> then they can print more money and your assets can go up. Does that make sense? You with me? Okay, cool. Okay, okay. And the second one, remember, is jobs. And I'm doing this backwards, but I just wanted you to get that get that in your head. And here's why. Because jobs, if jobs go up, that means that the economy is strong. 
That means that they can afford to not print as much money, which means the money printer goes down. If the job rating is goes down, if there's not a lot of jobs, if people don't have jobs, people are losing their jobs, yada, 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 then they can print more money to give those people back their jobs. Does that make sense? Are you guys with me? Okay, so what happened? Why is this the most important thing on Wednesday, Kale? That's what you were talking about, right? Well, I was talking about these two weird numbers right here. So what happened is on Friday, we got the payroll numbers in. Now, just like I showed you on my graph, remember, if jobs go down, money printing goes up. Well, here's what happened. Uh, jobs went way up. <laughs> it was expected to be 250K jobs and we got 528K jobs. We almost doubled it. So I'll show you on the chart just for you slow people in the back. Jobs went up which means money printer go down, which means assets go down. So this, this was bad, this was not great. And so what happened with the price of Ethereum with Bitcoin, I'm gonna switch charts because this is obviously very dirty now. But if you look at like the Bitcoin chart, what happened is the market got a little bit spooked and then it rallied. I don't really, I don't know, the market's kind of crazy, but there was a second there, it happened like right about here. See this, see this? This is when that data was released and we just went boom. I mean, the market rallied back after that, which is kind of funny. But uh, yeah, it, the market got very spooked right there and I think it's going to continue to get spooked next week because the jobs data was bad. But really all that it does, right? All that it does, and I should have I should have showed this on the chart, is it puts more pressure on the inflation aspect of this, right? Because people don't really care as much about jobs as they do inflation, they really don't. Like if you have a job, you probably don't care about other people's job, right? But you do care about how much uh, your eggs cost at the grocery store, right? So inflation is actually the bigger deal here, which means that since we've had a, a bad jobs report, at least it's a good jobs report, but good news is bad news, right? If we, since we've had a good jobs report, that means that the money printer is going to be slowing down and the market does not like that, which puts more pressure on this inflation print, which I'm getting to the point of the video, which is the CPI data on Wednesday. So it all comes down to this Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. So in this video, now that I've already gone for seven minutes, sorry, I apologize. I'm Normally my videos are five minutes. So come back guys for the normal programming. I'm going to go through this all so fast, but I want you guys to have a breakdown of this because this is the biggest event of the week. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here real quick is break down what's gonna happen with this inflation print. Because clearly, if inflation comes down on Wednesday, all of our assets go up. Money printer go up, Ethereum go up, okay? Which is great. But if inflation comes in hot on Wednesday, we're all gonna nuke and we're gonna go back to 20, we're gonna go back to 1250 ETH, which is not gonna be good. I don't wanna be holding ETH if we're gonna dump like that, right? None of us do. So I'm trying to figure out what's gonna happen with this inflation reading on Wednesday. Does that make sense? And so, let's talk about it. What's gonna happen? So I'm going through the articles as fast as possible. Here we go. This article says that the U.S. inflation respite won't divert the Fed rate hike plans. They're saying that the U.S., even though inflation is coming down, that's kind of saying that inflation might be coming down. That's interesting. But they're saying that it won't, it, whatever. Let's just focus on the inflation. Do, is inflation going to go up or down on Wednesday? That's the question we're trying to answer, okay? Let's just answer that question. <laughs> I have all the tabs. I hope my mouse is working. Come on, baby. Here we go. But Ma also said there will be a huge, huge focus on Wednesday CPI reading especially in light of the jobs report, this is what I just explained to you, if both point to inflation that's more sticky, it's possible the narrative will change where the Fed is ultimately gonna have to take interest rates higher. Remember, this is what I've been saying to you. I think my drawing explains it better. If inflation go down, money printer go up. If inflation go up, money printer go down. You get it? You got it? Okay, we got it, good. All right, <laughs> let's just get on with it. The month over month reading, this is what the expectation is. It's, it's, this is important. The expectation for Wednesday is this, that we are going to decrease, the month over month reading is expected to show a 0.2% increase down from the 1.3% pace of the prior month. The headline number, this is the one number you're gonna to wanna to look for on Wednesday, it's going to go from 9.1 to 8.8. .8. So let's just break it down even further, okay? 8.8 .8 is the big number, okay? This is all the markets are gonna care about right here, okay? If inflation is less then 8.8 .8 assets will go up. If it's the opposite, the opposite is true. You guys got that? If this is higher, if it's higher than 8.8, .8, your assets will go down. You with me? You with me? Okay, so let's try to figure it out. Is it gonna be higher or lower than 8.8? .8? So what I've done here, and I'm a genius, you're welcome for this video, smash the like button if you're enjoying it so far, okay? Is I'm breaking down what is in this number. So that 8.8 .8 number is very important, right? Here's the CPI data. This is what makes up the CPI number. Shelter is 32% of the data. Food, 14%. Energy, 7%. Education, whatever. So let's try to break this down. Let's see what's gonna happen. Okay, let's start with shelter. 
Did Shelter go down from the last print and by how much? Shelter, and here's the key about Shelter, guys. Shelter is rent. It's not housing. If it was housing, I think we'd be in good shape, right? Housing would be in wonderful shape because housing prices have gone down. However, owner's equivalent rent is what they're looking for. They're looking for rent prices. And this is the one that, that gets me a little scared. Like I'd be buying all the Ethereum on the planet right now if it was just oil, food, energy, all these things, right? But I'm a little scared about this because check this out, okay? The, among services, the shelter price index, which accounts for about 40% of core CPI, has been running in the range of blah, blah, blah for the past six months. Would be home buyers appear to be turning to the rental market amid rising mortgage rates and high house prices, with evidence that new leases are being contracted at extremely high rates. The shelter component is expected to keep core inflation rates elevated in the near term. Not good. Apartments. Seeking Alpha, over the first seven months of 2022, rents have increased by a total of 6.7%. Huh. That's not good. This rise represents a 13.7% year-over-year increase. Ugh. Prices go down, but rents keep going up. Rents have jumped about 2.8% in the past quarter and expected to rise further still said CoreLogic's research director. We've already seen rents up 9.8% over the 12 months to July. Yikes. Okay, so this is the one that's got me scared. It looks like the rent the rent is sticky. It looks like the rent prices are high. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Like, I, I can't get into the Federal Reserve's data and be like, uh, uh, which, which apartments are you surveying here? But it looks to me like this is going to be sticky. It looks like this is not going to come down a lot. So that's bad. That's bad. If, if, if inflation in rent prices doesn't come down or it goes up, that's going to have a huge effect on this number. And it has the potential to rug us, right? Because if this number is higher than 88 on Wednesday, you better hide your kids and hide your wives because we're going down, okay? It's gonna be bad. And so that gives me a little scared to like just buy a bunch of Ethereum right now, especially considering what I said about the jobs data. The jobs data makes this so important. I've already, I've already, I'm not gonna beat a dead horse. You guys, you guys with me? The second part is energy, gasoline, right? So this one's easy. Gas prices have fallen for 50 straight days, approaching $4 a gallon. We have uh, oil prices falling below $90 a barrel for the first time since Ukraine. So that's good. I mean, we're obviously, you guys have seen this in your own lives, right? Gas prices are coming down. So energy costs, transportation come on, uh, transportation services, um, all of these things that are affected by the price of gasoline uh, should be good, right? Uh, this one's transportation commodities. I don't know what the hell that means, to be very honest. But I think I have some stuff here that's showing that commodities are falling in general. It's usually these tweets from like Raul Paul. Uh, the last leg of the commodity demand destruction trade is kicking in. So if you look at this graph right here, I was just trying to go in order here. Uh, energy, uh, transportation commodities, transportation services, those definitely are coming down, right? W way down since the last print. So that's good. That's good news. Let's check out food. I mean, food is a big one, right? It's, it's, it makes up, it's almost double the amount of waiting as, as uh gas right so let's check this out da, da, da. world food prices the post the biggest decline since 2008 in july well that's good food prices are definitely coming down global food prices declined significantly in july but still up from last year okay well that's good we want to hear declining significantly that's that's great okay global food price index down 8.6 percent in july on tumbling cereal and veggie oil prices thank god the cereal is cheaper right hallelujah give me some lucky charms right but the food looks like it's getting cheaper, thank God. Okay, that's great. So, when we look at this graph, I mean, it's starting to look a little bit better. This one, we don't know. This one might still look gone up, we don't know. This one definitely went down, definitely went down, definitely went down, definitely went down. I don't know how to find education and communication services. I don't know how to find, honestly, much of the rest of this. All I know is that everything is coming down. Car prices are coming down, used car demand is down. Um, what else we got here? We already showed you the food. We have uh, inventory glut. The bullwhip effect is taking care. The bullwhip effect is in effect, which means Walmart has way too much inventory. All these stores have way too much inventory, which is bringing prices down. So I don't know. I, I mean, you have Raul Paul saying that there's not a lot of demand for commodities. <sighs> Overall, this is why it's squirrely, guys. This is why I'm, I'm stressed out, okay? I'm making this video on a Saturday night because if you look at this chart, like I truly believe that this, this Wednesday thing is the difference between 1250 ETH and $2,500 ETH. Go watch my other videos if you're wondering why I'm only talking about ETH. I don't care about Bitcoin right now. I don't care about stocks right now. Ethereum is the trade, okay? We have a we have BlackRock, which is going to buy so much Ethereum, I can't even, I changed my name on Twitter to Kale 
BlackRock is buying all the ETH aid. <laughs> like, this is humongous, okay? Plus, we have the merge coming up. This, Ethereum could legit, legitimately hit like $5,000 next year. $10,000 next year if everything goes well. If, 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 okay? I'm trying to say if a lot because this data, if it's sticky, if inflation is sticky, it's not going to matter that we have the merge trade. It's not going to matter that BlackRock is buying. It's not. Okay, this is the most important thing. So look for this on Wednesday. If it's lower than 8.8, .8, Ethereum's going to the effing moon. If it's higher than 8.8, .8, we're screwed. Okay, so there you go. There's your summary. Last thing before you leave, this is important. Do not leave this video. Do not leave this video. What I'm doing in the NFT this week, if you go buy one of these NFTs and hold and jump into the Discord, is I've offered a cash prize to the people in our NFT just to get them interested, but also because I think that as a group, there's a group of amazing smart people who own these NFTs, right? If as a group, we're going to try to find someone or a group of people that have correctly predicted this in the future, right? There's some there's some people analyzing this data, right? Like I'm trying to analyze this data on this video. I'm trying to figure it out in my head like, Gas prices went down, okay, but uh, shelter prices went up. I don't know, um, energy, like there's there's people with better data than me, right? There's statisticians, there are there are people that do this for a living. Like I'm trying to do this for a living, but I don't do inflation prints for a living, you know? So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to find someone over the, the rest of this week who has accurately predicted the past few prints. Remember, the when I say print, I mean 8.8, .8, right? Every single month, there's one of these freaking readings. So we're gonna look for people that have correctly called what this number has been ahead of time. So hopefully by Monday or Tuesday, we will know ahead of time from someone who has called ones in the past correctly by doing data analysis, what this number will be. Imagine if on Monday, you knew to a good degree of certainty what this number would be. Wouldn't that help you make money? Maybe you would buy some Ethereum because you know that it's going to 2,500. Maybe you would buy some Bitcoin because you know it's going to 30K or maybe you would short Ethereum or just sell it before Wednesday before it dumps. So this is big, okay? So we're going to try to, to, to predict the future. We can't predict the future, but we're going to try. So if you're interested in that, jump into the Discord. There's a link below. Woo, I'm excited. I'm gonna upload this now. Please smash the like button if you enjoy this. This is one of my best videos. I love you guys. See you tomorrow. See you whenever. Bye.